What's going on, guys? Wish me luck. I hope this live stream works out this time. Last time we had some technical difficulties. Today, I think we'll be good to go. So let me know in the comments if you can hear me. Hey, Liv, welcome. Let's paint, guys. The new studio is here. Hopefully you can hear me. I said all this yesterday. Apparently no one, it didn't work out. You were there. It's done. It's not done, done, but it's done, done. I got black lights. I got regular cool lights. I got whatever. Let's just paint. So, what am I starting with? It's been a minute. Let's do a graffiti design. We'll look at these chats. Love the new studio. Thanks, guys. Oh, is, the, is everything coming through clearly? I did a test a minute ago to make sure the mic was working and everything was good, but I'm afraid that it's not. Do you remember me? I recognize the name. I do get a lot of comments. I have my shirt, looks awesome. Let's get more likes in here, guys. I got nothing wrong with that. Purple and green, I think you're in luck. No, actually, it's blue and green. Let's do a start with the graffiti design. Kyra. K E I R A H. I'm sorry I have been absent for a while. Um, this, this took way longer than I expected to be able to get set up. And then I've been so far behind on orders that I had to focus on getting those out. Um, but I'm still a little behind, I'm still catching up, but I tried to, to set myself up so I could paint while I was talking to you guys. Getting good. All right, make sure my camera is right. Hopefully it doesn't die. I got it plugged in, but it doesn't seem to be charging very fast. Man. I missed you guys. It's still not done. I still got a better camera set up to create. It's going to be a sort of a two camera deal. You'll be able to see me talking to you guys so I can make eye contact as well as watching what I'm painting. It'll be cool. I saw you posted yesterday at 12. What was I doing? I'm always up. Just because I'm not painting doesn't mean I'm not working. All right, I gotta apparently clean this airbrush out. Sorry, guys. I missed you too. I missed you guys. Hopefully, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming. I've got lots of big plans. I've been thinking on what I'm gonna do, what videos I can make. Got the whole Bob Ross outfit here ready for me to try on. That's gonna be fun. Got a couple other ones in mind. What is going on? Lighting could use a little more improvement. What are we looking at? Um, what, brighter? Yeah, I could use a little more lighting. Still got, still got a ways to go. I'll also be able to edit some of the lighting and, and colors on the videos before it gets uploaded to the live stream once I have it plugged in to my computer. Right now everything is wireless, but soon it will be ran through USB. Which means I have more control over everything. I'm having still a little bit of issue here with this airbrush. Your Bob Ross for Halloween. That's cool. Do you actually paint graffiti outside of airbrushing? I haven't done any like tags on walls and stuff. Um, I would like to start doing some murals and things. I'm gonna start by painting some bigger canvases on this wall. Big pieces on unrolled canvases that I can ship out or whatever. And once I start getting the hang of painting at that scale, then maybe I'll do some murals locally if someone's interested, or just keep painting those things and shipping them out. There we go, there's a big booger coming out of here. Sorry guys, I thought I was all set up before I started this. I always, I've been scheduling the live streams a couple minutes in advance. I think I'm giving myself plenty of time to get ready, but it still comes down to it. And I was like, oh, I scheduled it for right now. I need to get to it. Um, it's hard. Summer Jean, I said that. Yes. 
The Airheads missed you. That's such, it's still a cheesy name to me, guys. The Airheads. I'm really having an issue with this, guys. Sorry. I want to just paint, but I can't paint if it's not gonna, it's not gonna work right. This is this is airbrush life. Sometimes you run into stuff it prevents you from getting work done. So much dried paint and wet paint for that matter. Look at this. I don't really want to wipe it on my pants. All right, we're almost done. Sorry for all of this. If you made a mistake, is a shirt trash or can I fix it? It depends on the mistake. Advice for removing, removing buildup on airbrush guns. Alcohol works great. Um, I use WD-40 a lot of the time just because it's a good lubricant and breaks down paint some. Um, there's also a lot better or more powerful airbrush cleaning solvents and whatnot, but usually alcohol would do the trick. Okay. I think, I think we're okay. We're still trailing. Um, C E I R A H. I kind of got to get back into the hang of this. Um, I took like a week off from painting and from talking to you guys, and it's kind of harder than I expected to just keep doing what I've been doing for so long. We haven't seen your face today. I don't have a mirror up. Um, but I will. I'll have, I'll have a camera dedicated to seeing my strange, goofy looking face. And my big old Polish nose that my wife makes fun of. And my peacock hairdo. put us on the tripod. No. Lift. We're not going to do that. Not happening. So I'm going to stop making fun of my hair. I tested some of the volume levels before I started this, but give me some feedback on, on on music level. I think it's too loud. But um, whoa, super chat! Thank you, Kimberly. That's what I like to see. Two whole dollars. That's what's up. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the compliment. Blue, green, black. All right, I'm gonna throw some blue in here. It's gonna start looking good in a second. So I've been I've been playing with these black lights that I installed, and I always turn them on just to see what the shirt would look like. That's kind of cool, but. Not all the colors are UV reactive, which is what that black light does, um, but some of them are, and it, it looks cool when it does work out. Did 
Do you have a video on how to achieve better clean strokes? I will. Um, I will have a whole series of videos on how to do everything, how to improve, how to learn and start and everything. I'm gonna do that. Really, I can give you some advice now to get better, cleaner lines. You need to get close to the shirt and really you just need to practice your control with this trigger. Um, almost all of your detail and your lines and stuff come from just a little tiny bit of movement on this trigger. Uh, practice, 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 really. It's, I know it's not what you want to hear to practice more, but honestly, there's no special, special secret method other than practicing and not having dirty airbrushes. Where you based your style is very old school New York. I get that a lot. Um, I'm actually not really familiar with the differences in style between locations because I'm not really a graffiti head as much as um, I don't have the culture, you know? I just been sketching by myself. Have I seen Jamie Rodriguez's videos? Yes, they've been a huge inspiration to me actually starting out. Um, I watched all his videos back in the day before he passed. Um, I didn't realize you could do single stroke script lettering really until I watched him do it. And I was like, wow, you did that in one line. That's really cool. I need to add oh, a little thing here at the bottom. Making for project for school. Your own gum line. I've never, you can make gum? I guess you can. That's very off topic. So, yeah, my graffiti style isn't really something that's developed over a long period of time. It kind of is, obviously, because here it is, but um, when, you, when you airbrush, like, as a trade, you do block and, like, bubbly letters and whatnot, and they're, they're filled letters like this, but they're a lot more simple um, because your customers really need to be able to read your shirt. It doesn't matter how cool it looks. If they can't read it, they're always unhappy. So for all most of my career, I've been doing very simple bubbly letters that we always called graffiti letters. But over time, I started developing a little more style to put into them. And because of that, I, I know some people say that the stuff isn't legible and maybe it isn't legible to everybody, but I always focus on trying to make sure you can read the stuff and it's not too crazy wild style of littering, which I think is why people bring it back to the, the New York style graffiti. Because most of their stuff is just big bombing tags, big bubbly letters and throw ups. If it was up to me and I was painting for myself and not for an order, there would be a lot more style in the letters. And you guys will be seeing a lot more of that soon. I feel like this is too loud. Um, like I said, I'll be able to do a lot more of my artwork and not just order artwork very soon. I already got the process of that started up. Some cool big things that I can't talk about happened this week. Am I ready for winter time? I don't mind winter. Um, when it gets cold, I just stay inside. It turns into video game season and computer work season. What I'm not ready for is Christmas. I get really busy at Christmas. I'm really busy now and it won't stop until January. Thank you guys. All right, I'm feeling I'm feeling like I'm warmed up a little better. Let's start the next shirt. 
that was that was difficult. I don't know. It was mentally challenging for me to to get back into it while I was talking to you guys. Let's go. Purple teal and black writing Mia. I'm not gonna use that color. M I A. Same design, same style. Got less letters so they can be a little bigger and cooler. Forgot I mixed the new color into this one. So you can see it's getting, I don't know if you can see it, it's getting darker as I go. I think that's a good foundation. <laughs> Thank you guys. I wish you, what would you say to a shirt or hoodie exchange? I'd be down for that. Yeah, that'd be cool. You said you did some graffiti work too. I'd love to see uh, your graffiti style. We could do a classic graffiti artist exchange. I'll paint your name, you paint mine, but in your style. And uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Send me a message through through something and let me know that you came from this video. There's links in the in the description to all my social channels. You pick your favorite and hit me up and we'll set it up. Do a little collaboration if you want to for a video or something. Still got a little bit of a booger situation with this airbrush, but it's black, but that's okay. Thank you guys. Down two if you like canvas work. I want to do a lot more canvas work. That would be awesome. Can't collaborate with everybody, but yeah, if you got if you got a cool graffiti style and you care enough to watch what I'm doing, then I'm happy to let's make it happen. Someone suggested before the studio was finished, the last live stream I did, um, to do a hip hop style Grinch with a gold chain and all of that and then use that as like a design to sell merch with it's kind of me changing the subject but that's another thing I want to paint soon is more characters and artwork not just letters I do love letters I like letters but um stuff I want to challenge myself I haven't challenged myself much when someone wants something that I don't like to paint or I don't feel comfortable painting I just say no um, back in the day I had to because I had to take every order I could get um, that's resulted in me getting a little bit lazy I guess with my art as far as trying new things and I'm done with that 
it's time to, to branch out, do stuff that I'm not comfortable with, learn some new things. And then once I learn it a little bit, I can give you guys some tips on how I did it or whatever. Done. Out. All right, Liv, thanks for hanging out. I see you. Can you draw a Japanese monument? What is a Japanese monument? What color is this? Purple and teal. I need more air pressure. Could you do a Rona too, please? Ouch. Another big booger in this one. You should make a 3D thicker on the left side of the M. Yeah, I should. You right? I will do that. When I'm doing something like a canvas, I spend a lot more time. Is that a drip of paint? That is a drip of paint. I spend a lot more time making sure things are right when I do a canvas or something. Come on. Everything is fighting me today. A little bit frustrating. Better. A little bit better. Man. Just having all kinds of issues. For the last two days, I've meant to at night just take every airbrush apart and clean it out completely. I just can't get myself to do it at 10 o'clock when I'm done <laughs> doing what I need to do for the day. I will do it soon. It'll make me paint faster and better and feel better about it. I just need to do it. But it'll take like four hours. I didn't say pink, but I'm gonna use pink to blend. And now some teal. Oh my goodness. How long am I streaming for? I never know how long am I streaming for. Right now I'm painting at 50 PSI. After these hoodies, I got a bunch of hats to paint. I got all the, the interesting ones out.
back. See you later. Glad you guys enjoy watching. Um, I don't do... That's another one of those things. I don't do portraits. Someone asked about portraits. I don't do a lot of those. Uh, again, that's outside of my comfort zone. And something that I'm going to pick back up and try soon. Uh, just for fun. Can't make any promises on how they'll turn out. There's lots of different types of airbrushing. Um, or at least attitudes behind airbrushing. There's some people that do super, super realistic portraits and, and vehicles and stuff like that. And that's cool and it takes a lot of talent and skill, but that's not my artistic style. If I wanted to really... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to paint portraits and still lifes. I want to paint artwork and graffiti style stuff, cartoony things or whatever. So I've avoided painting realism in the past. But again, just because I'm not good at it doesn't mean I shouldn't try. You guys can laugh at me as I try to paint a portrait. made my first um, emoji for you guys. Soon there'll be a, a couple, I think I can get five or something, five custom emojis to use in the chat. I made one last night. I'll show it off later if I remember to. Um, it's a cardboard, <laughs> I don't know why it's a cardboard box, I just started drawing a cardboard box. But it's a, it's a box with a balloon coming out with a smiley face on it. Following the whole the whole airheads thing you guys started. Yeah, definitely need to clean all these airbrushes. I don't know if you can tell, these lines just aren't as smooth as they should be. Alright, there's a lot of comments here. How do I get the dimensions? I measured, I just laid a shirt flat. And I was like, alright, it needs to be this wide. And made it a little tiny bit wider so that the shirt was stretched a little bit. Um, but really it's just the, the width of your shirts. I have three sizes, like a small, medium, large. And anything bigger than large, I just use clips. A Christmas discount, I, I didn't do a Christmas or Black Friday or anything because there's so many orders are coming in that if I did a discount and got a bigger wave of orders, I wouldn't be able to, to keep up with it. I need to do something with this strip. The shirt gets splatter. Like I've said, I want I want to do less less orders and more artwork. So I'm really not pushing T-shirt sales um, at the moment. I still need them. I don't have enough money to <laughs> only work off YouTube revenue, but I'm hopeful that I can get there. So I'm working towards it, dipping into my savings, trying to make it happen. We will see. All right, these are done. I'm going to move them and I'm gonna paint some hats right here. Okay. 
these hats. Get my stool. Get my thing. Actually, it should be over here more. Okay. Yeah, guys, I'm trying to read the comments, but there's a lot. Um, and I am trying to get stuff done, so. If you have an actual question for me, do it, tag me with like a at, an at Dale, and I can see that a little better. Okay, what's first? Neon green. Shirt Kings out of New York. I've seen something about them. Not a whole lot. Are they airbrush artists? I don't remember. Blue and pink is what I'm doing here. S O U L F U L. Soulful. That's the green one. Yeah. Disconnect to the quick connect system. Yeah, I used to have an airbrush hose for every color, um, and that was just not not practical at all. You got a tangle of cords everywhere, of hoses everywhere, and it was frustrating. And then I found out about these guys, and <laughs> I don't know how many hours of tripping over and untangling cords it saved me over the last ten years, but it's a lot. It's also cheaper than having a bunch of hoses just to have a quick disconnect for each one. Air manifolds are expensive and heavy and big. And the more hoses you got, the more chances you have for leaks everywhere, air leaks. Quick disconnects are where it's at. do I use? This is an Omni 3000 by Badger. What do you do with errors? Usually I can fix the error um, without a big problem. Um, if, if it's not something I can fix then I'll we'll start over and it'll happen. It happens every now and then, not too often. Usually an error I make would be a spelling mistake more than anything else. Yeah, it's usually because I'm talking to you guys. I'm not paying attention. I don't like this shape I just did on top here. It kind of seems forced. There it is. I need someone who paints canvases. I can paint canvases depending on what you want painted on said canvas. Thank you for compliments on the setup. Working hard on it, not quite done yet. Does your son paint with me sometimes? Yeah, he does. Um, he's two and a half, so he doesn't quite have the, the dexterity. But he's getting there. We, we try to draw a little bit every day together. Right now we got a whiteboard in his room with a bunch of uh, dry erase markers. 
and he loves those. He loves drawing. And he loves letters too. He can sing his ABCs. LMNLP gets a little rocky, but that's everybody. Do you use any stencils all freehand? Mostly all freehand. Um, freehand's faster for me. There's some things that I use stencils for, like a, bl a brick flat, blah, blah, brick black background. I can't say that word. Um, some things you can add some texture and stuff to, to designs real quick. But as far as like the subject of the design goes, I'd rather paint it by hand because that gives me a lot more flexibility on its size and position and whatnot. And the things that I do draw are usually simple enough that it doesn't take a long time to just sketch it out real quick. There's nothing wrong with using stencils if that's what you're doing, but for me it's faster to just freehand it. If it's a crown or like a spray can or something that I'm drawing a quick cartoon version of, it doesn't take any time at all. I just knock that out freehanded. And letters, there's a lot of stencils out there for graffiti letters. Um, I, I kind of feel like that's cheating. If you use those, those are cool. Um, not judging you, but I feel like a little bit that it's cheating, but more importantly, it feels like if I had set stencils for the size and shape of my letters, they wouldn't be able to play with each other. Um, they, all the letters always interact. Um, so, that, you know. so if you have a set font of letters that you're using, your graffiti is not going to be as interesting, and you're also limited to what size they are and whatnot, and uh, that can cause problems. So, no, freehand is, is preferred for sure. Thank you, guys. Sergeant, I hear you about the word duck. Um, right now, I'm painting orders, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a request at the moment. But yes, that is very much something I can do. All right, Team Frank. I'm gonna do team in a smaller font, and then Frank is gonna be the big one. So I guess I'll walk you through how I set this up. You guys have seen me, but I'll talk about it a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is space out my letters. Just lay out a simple stroke of each one. And this is mostly for placement. I want to make sure that they're in the right spot. Um, and then I'm going to come back and figure out how the letters can interact with one another. So there's a lot of empty space here. I'm going to fill that up by moving this R this way a little bit. And there's too much stuff going on here. So I'm going to move the A up and do something like that instead. And I want to make sure every stroke has plenty of room to be legible amongst themselves and then I usually do this part with just black outlines instead of sketching but next I, I expand on all of these strokes you know with a the style then that's where the letters are going to end up being and I am just going to do that with black so I work from left to right typically because that's how you write letters I add little little cuts like that inside things, just that's a style, style decision. And when I come to a point where two letters are going to overlap, I decide which part of which letters are going to be on top and which parts are going to be underneath. This R and A are going to interact somehow right here. I want to make sure that the most interesting and the most important parts of the letters are visible for legibility. So. I'm going to put the A on top of the R, actually. Instead of underneath it. I forgot I was writing team. I would've, wouldn't have gone that high. It's fine. Um, in this case, A is going to stay on top. Frank. 
Now the drop shadow, I usually don't do a full 3D effect necessarily. I just add a drop shadow or really more, just more line weight on the bottom. And the shadow itself actually helps with legibility because your brain knows that this black space isn't a letter instead of the outlines. It's, it's just it's confusing unless you have a solid background to it. Now that clearly says, well to me it clearly says Frank. Some people will have a hard time reading that still. And I can shape them things up as I go. I'm going to write team up here before I forget. Whoa! Where are you going, guy? That doesn't look easy at all. It's not too bad. If I was talking to to past Dale, then yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any idea what I'm doing right now. But learning what I've learned, not just like getting better, but learning what I've learned, I think I could learn on, or pick it up a lot faster now. This is kind of why I'm so excited about teaching and making videos because I know that other people can pick this up way faster than I did and I know there's a lot better graffiti artists out there than I am and I want to see them use one of these to make graffiti. How's the Airheads logo going? Um, I don't know if I'm going to make an actual logo. Maybe I will. I'm working on those emojis like I said. Um, being a, a channel I get to have I think it's like five. It starts out as five custom emojis that you guys can use in the chat. Um, so kind of in my free time working on on those they're not my main focus but they're fun to sketch when I'm bored and I got one done I don't know if I can upload just one if I can then I will I'll upload that one you know about twisting the bottle aside oh for sure I used to paint hats on a board and they would be folded up and like real flat so that the brim didn't get in the way um, nowadays it's easier for me to just paint like this I don't know it's not that difficult. The brim doesn't really ever get in my way. It used to. I guess it's just a different technique. I guess I should kind of try to match those old colors, huh? Thank you guys. Very good. I like the compliments. I can't wait to see what you guys make once you start, once I start having people inspired to create things too. I love to see your work. If the two guys, I don't know if they're still in here, the two guys we were talking about doing collaborations with or a trade with, that's the kind of thing I want to see. That's going to be fun. Let's do some more of those. Now time for the white highlights. White is another thing that always uh, was difficult because white paint is so much thicker, it's harder to spray. But now that I can paint at a higher PSI, a higher pressure, uh, it's not so bad. The higher your pressure, the harder it is to control your paint. So as you gain some experience and can paint at higher pressures you can spray a lot thicker paint a lot faster which makes stuff like this white highlight which would typically be really hard to spray spray well as long as you can control it And I usually highlight the bottom, which is different, it's odd, because light is supposed to come from the top. But typically, I fill the letters with a darker color on the bottom and a lighter color on top. That's, who, that's not always the case. Um, but I want to have, if I'm feeling, if I have the darker color on the bottom, I want to put the highlight on the darker color, because I want there to be more contrast. I don't know if that made sense. The white highlight stands out against a darker background, so I like to put the highlight against the darker background, which is usually at the bottom, and that's why that happens. That's, that's good, that's fine. Doing a tutorial series, yes. 
That is something I definitely want to do. Um, now that I got this studio straight, as long as I can catch up on orders and have some time to make videos I want to, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's a, a whole start to finish how to airbrush type of deal. That is coming soon. We're working on that very soon. How did I get into airbrush graffiti art? Let me write this name first and then I'll talk about it. This is a flame design. It's kind of neat. It's a lot of text too. J Butterfly. One word all the way across. I gotta fit this in. This is a lot of text. It's gonna take some some plan. I think that'll work. This is gonna be a struggle. So I got into airbrushing when I started my job at the theme park. I feel like I've told this story a million times. Um, theme park with the seasonal seasonal opening and I close in the winter, but. They gave me my first job from looking at my art portfolio from high school, which wasn't very good. Um, I had no experience in lettering. I couldn't write a script alphabet. It was pretty bad, but the dude took me on. He taught me everything <laughs> about lettering that I, that I know. Still, still got things that he said bouncing around in my head. He was a great artist, great teacher, whatever. But I worked at that theme park for a while, learned, went from zero to okay at airbrushing over two years. And when that season ended at the theme park and I had to close down for the year, um, I didn't have a job. So I started an online store. This is way back before Etsy and Shopify. Trying to sell my work online, which really didn't work very well because it was a new business. Look how small this Y is gonna have to be. Anyway, I uh, opened up a shop in the mall and got, got bigger and bigger until I had time to work on the website and then eventually closed down the mall and did it all online. And here I am making videos now. That was probably the most confusing way I could explain that. My brain is in a different place right now. A theme park. I started at a theme park. It wasn't until the last two or three years, I guess, that I started doing graffiti style lettering. I promise this will look better once I finish it up. Where are you located? Worked at shirts doing an affair. All right, let me absorb these comments. No, I don't always thin my paint. Usually, yes. Um, most of it's straight out of the bottle. I'm using Createx paints. Have I worked at fairs? I used to do a lot of events. I got my own setup. I use CO2 tanks. So I got big old 20 pound CO2 tanks that I can, so I can paint at a fair somewhere that, and I don't need a compressor, which is awesome. Um, they're kind of expensive to fill, but if you're busy all day, that makes up for it. Um, I don't do fairs and stuff anymore, usually. Where am I located? I am, really, I want to tell you I'm located online because I don't have a retail shop. This is my garage. But I live in Richmond, Virginia. If you're local or you know someone local to that, uh, I would love to start doing some murals and things locally. Graffiti style murals. I'm gonna be picky about what kind of work I do. Give us advice to be just like you in the future. You don't wanna be just like me. If you wanna be just like me, what I would define myself as is um, 
a problem solver. I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that I'm doing. I wouldn't have been able to make this a business. I wouldn't have been able to learn how to airbrush if I wasn't able to think for myself and solve problems. I see a whole lot of people asking me every question about what I do and how I got set up and how to airbrush and how to clean stuff and everything. And it's good to ask questions. But if you can't think for yourself and solve problems, do some critical thinking and, you know, troubleshoot things yourself, then you're always going to have those questions and you're not going to be able to be successful as an entrepreneur. Um, the requirement of that is, is use your noggin and think for yourself. Um, so make it a habit to develop a hypothesis before you ask a question. Maybe even test that hypothesis a few times. We live in the age of the internet where you can look anything up, which is great. But if you don't use your brain before you use your fingertips, then you're going to run into issues. Yeah, CO2 is great. I'm just going to paint that yellow. It's going to look fine. business strategies go um, if you're starting out with a new skill like airbrushing or something think less about how you're gonna sell your products until you've uh, figured out what it is you like to do exactly the first step in starting any kind of business especially an art type of business is to get good at whatever it is you want to do figure out what you like and what you don't like to paint Find a niche, 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 niche. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, and take advantage of that. Again, we live in 2020, age of the internet and Instagram and social media and everything else. If you are really good at one particular thing, there are enough people on the planet that you can make a business, make a living doing anything as long as you are good at doing that thing. And that. <laughs> perfect example of that is streaming video games. There's these 13 year old kids making millions of dollars a year playing Fortnite and everything else, Minecraft and everything. Um, that's a testament to show you that all you have to do is be good at something to make it. So stop worrying about trying to sell your products and worry about getting good at it. And that might mean you have to work at food line and in your spare time practice something but you can do it can I ship to India can yes some random person what's up See, yeah, back, you're talking about um, album covers and comic books. Back in the day, airbrushing seemed to be like the prime, before it was like Photoshop, basically. They used airbrushing for Photoshop, creating graphics and stuff. And now it's more lettering and art styles instead of photo rendering. Okay, this will be a little easier. Blue, black, and green. Wait, no. Blue, pink, and green. Trudy, whatever. I want to do. What do I want to do? All right, blue, green, and pink. Pink and green don't blend together, so they're gonna be on. They're not gonna be the gradient inside. Green is gonna be on the. No, pink is gonna be on the outside. Blue and green are gonna be on the inside. You always gotta plan your colors in advance. Some colors don't blend together, so you have to figure out how they're gonna situate. T R U D Y. Again, I'm spacing everything out. Thinking about where they're gonna live. I'm not doing that. That's dumb. And into the black outlines. Okay, get my Christmas stockings. That would be a great idea. It's one of those things I would definitely be pushing 
if I had time. on top of the D. have a gun for every color. Um, that saves a lot of time. It's not something you need until you're painting all day every day, but definitely saves paint from cleaning out between colors and it saves time. Been painting for 12 years. It's just been uh, accumulated over the years. been using the Omni 3000s for the last eight years or so. But I'm having a hard time finding any more of them because they stopped making them and stopped communicating with me. So, I'm looking for alternatives. <laughs> Not actively, but I have some, some new ones on the way. I'll be testing and trying out. Yes, the gun you use matters and there are differences between them, but it's not gonna make or break your artwork. You still have to be a good airbrush artist. You can give me any airbrush and it's gonna end up looking like this. It might take longer to get there, a little bit. But it's not going to change the, the look of your art as much as just your comfort with it. Those Pache VLs that everyone used back in the day. Um, I started out with those. I used those again recently and they're a lot of fun. They're still a great airbrush. They're old, but they're rugged and they do their job. And they're cheap. Pache's. I don't think anybody can spell Pache right. Dirty. I bought all of them. <laughs> I did buy a good handful. I've got about 25 of them and I bought, back when I was trying to do that airbrush supply shop, I bought 40 of them. I was wondering if you paint on black tees. I can. And I do. Um, black tees are always harder. They take a little longer. You gotta build up layers slowly. And they do fade a little bit faster, but they are fun to paint, kind of, depending on what you're painting. The old stoner, yes, that's what I did at first. I always had one dedicated to black and dedicated to white, and then I had one for, you know, each color family, so that switching didn't cause such a big problem. What kind of generator? Do you mean air compressor? I have a just a big old construction type of husky air compressor outside so you don't hear it sorry i have to go thanks for coming by no problem um feel free to to subscribe and look at other videos 
do I consider myself having a certain style? Hi, Tyler. Um, I guess so. Yeah, this is my style. I have a style that I would do for like production work, which is what this is. These are all airbrush orders. And then I have another style, which is very similar. It's kind of the same style that I would do for my own artwork, um, my own lettering that I'm just doing for fun. And really, it's the same thing, but I just get more complex with it. Um, the letters would be way more interactive with each other. There'd be extra blocks and things. Um, but really, every graffiti artist has kind of an algorithm in their head, some fundamental rules that dictate what letters look like and how they're shaped and everything. It, a graffiti artist's style is just, I don't know, a program in their head that... Someone help me explain that. It's not a font, it's not always the same letters, but you always use the same same rules in your head to create them. And you can have multiple styles and things, but it kind of all boils down to your artistic style somewhere deep down in there. And it comes out in everything that you make. Your channel really exploded in the last two months. That was because of one, one video. Um, that daggone T-Moo shirt. Um, blew up. It's gotten like 25 million views or something at this point. Which is really awesome. It would be way more awesome if I made any kind of ad revenue off of that video. Because I'd be able to retire at this point. But it didn't. I didn't make any money off that video. Which wasn't the point or the goal, but it would have been really cool. But yeah, that video blew up and it brought in a bunch of people. It's also been... A lot of the people that have subscribed have also dropped off. That video has brought in like 80,000 something subscribers. But you notice I only have 50,000 right now. Which means at least 30,000 of those people said, This isn't actually what I thought was going on here. Bye. But the, the viral nature of that video is starting to die down, which is actually kind of a good thing, because now I'm getting more genuine, real people joining in, and now the subscribers that I'm getting are people who care more directly about my content, not just saw that one video and was like, oh, that's cool. Ergen Yusuf. I don't know. I know there's a bunch of great graffiti artists that do cool hats. There's a guy in Australia. Um, his name is eluding me right now. But hats are hats are fun to paint on because it was a small canvas. What's going on here? Pink and purple, with orange and yellow on the outside. Jessica. Yeah, on YouTube, that's the same videos from forever. There's also Mike's brush. Uh, but Airbrush Asylum is a good guy. He's cool. You also look back at old uh, Jamie Rodriguez's stuff. It's cool to see that his stuff is still here, getting, getting attention. J-E-S-S-I-C-A. This one is less of a graffiti style and more of just bubbly letters. So it's gonna be a little simpler. Hopefully, you give me another year or so and you'll see me all over YouTube. My goal is to, I mean, I'm always gonna be an airbrush artist and that's my target audience, but if I wanna be successful on YouTube, I need to branch out and be, um, relatable by more than just airbrush enthusiasts. I'm gonna have to also do like viral trending topics and stuff and paint things that are going on, I don't know. 
Christmas is coming up, I should do that that Grinch, hip hop Grinch dude that someone had suggested and just make a cool video of that to get people who don't actually care about airbrushing or graffiti at all to go, oh, I care about Christmas, and then they see it. That's kind of the goal. But on top of that, I will always do these live streams because they're fun and I'll always be making educational airbrush content. Just have to do a bunch of different things at the same time. Just to go. Just drop shadow, line weight type of deal. Fill in all these holes because it makes it easier to read when they're just black. on the inside, orange and yellow on the outside. Take hours just to make a human being. It takes like nine months to make a human being. At least. Vega 2000s are great. Um, I forgot about that. I went from Pache's to Vega's for a while and then started doing the Omnis. Vega's are great. All of Badger's projects products right now are um, hard to find. Dale, so what? Is it about the Iwatas that you don't like? Pache, yes. Hey, you spelled Pache right. Um, I don't dislike Iwata, necessarily. I think it's been a coincidence that all of my Iwatas have always had issues. Um, I think it's my fault. In my experience, they've sprayed a lot slower like the volume of paint that comes out is not nearly as much as my Omnis have but there's ways to adjust that and change that and that just might be my setup and stuff they're a finer airbrush typically I want is used for more detailed work um, I don't know if that's the case but that's my impression of the case uh, anybody doing helmets and stuff like that have I've always seen them using I whereas people doing t-shirts I've seen a lot of Vegas and Omnis and Pache's. And the, the difference is, Iwata is a Japanese company with a lot of technology or whatever. And their atomization of paint is far superior, which allows you to paint at much lower air pressures, which is awesome. Um, but for me, I don't need to paint at a lower air pressure. I would rather be using a spray can laying down paint as fast as possible. So I don't need that precision as much as I need paint volume. That and the reason I started with Badgers instead of Iwata is because they were cheaper. And that was a big factor in the beginning, especially when I wanted to order like 12 of them. Uh, parts were a lot cheaper and it was a lot easier to, to find what I needed to replace them with. So I tried the Omnis and I never went back. I still like them, they're great, but I'm using the exact same ones from 10 years ago. I'm so hungry, somebody order me a pizza. Oh, we got some questions and some answers. I can answer that. 
I want it. It's troublesome to loosen the trigger without taking. That's true. I want it. Badger's got a much better trigger situation. Yeah. Um, it just seems like Badger is a good t-shirt brand and Iwata is a good like fine tune. If I was going to buy one gravity fed airbrush to do some detailed work with, it would be an Iwata. Um, but if I'm going to order 15 airbrushes to paint t-shirts with, I might have said that wrong. I think I said t-shirt both times. Ness in bright colors, including blue and green. Public tennis on the rim in small black letters, if possible. Okay, so you said blue and green specifically. N E S S. Welcome, Ice Ifra. I'm glad you are enjoying this. I'm gonna do a different E this time. One of these guys. Pow. Um, let's see. I can do a different S too. I need to, sometimes I intentionally switch up my letters because I'll do the same exact ones over and over again. So it's nice to just rethink one letter at a time as you're, as you're learning and growing in your, your artistic career. Uh, pick a letter that's your least favorite or one that you struggle with or something like that and just change it up every now and then. Like today, every E I paint, I'm going to paint this style, something like that. And that forces you to try something new and really makes you rethink the way that you do all your other letters too. Keeps it fresh. Um, be inspired by a different artist's letter. Find some letter that you like from somebody else and copy one letter at a time or the style of one letter or something and, and use it that to, to kind of create your own style. Don't copy their whole alphabet, but like for example, Smo. Most of you guys probably know Smo. Um, his O's, I really liked his O's. So I kind of stole the style of his O's and I've been using it and it's modified since then. Um, but that was a big inspiration and I changed to his O's and some of the characteristics, the aspects that that algorithm that I was talking about um, that he uses, I borrowed part of it for part of his letter and that kind of played into to now my style. And this happens constantly with every artist and every piece of art that you see. It's kind of a, a changing thing all the time. You should always be able to look back at your work from a year ago or even six months ago and go, wow, I do something. I do these letters completely different now. And, you know, over time you build a library of different styles. I could probably write pages and pages of E's that all look different. Play Boga Boga on Roblox. I'm not gonna do that. I wanna change my music up, but I'm afraid it's gonna hit some copyright issues. I don't want that to happen. right blue and green I'm gonna do yellow also blue green and yellow tamales are you just trying to make me more hungry or Because it worked. Thanks, Dale, and Crave for paint. You're welcome. Guys, I appreciate it. This kind of goes without saying. I appreciate you guys taking time in the comments to answer each other's questions and things. I'm, uh, I'm honored that other experienced artists are in here sometimes. And if you got something to, to contribute amongst one another, please do. I'm not the authority on, on how to airbrush. How much are hats? Uh, right now, 
they're about $35 each. And that's because I'm trying to um, paint less of them, if that makes sense. I would rather not get as many orders and then be able to spend more time on each one than knock out a bunch of cheap designs. A super chat. Thank you, Ode Stoner. I really appreciate that. That's really awesome. That is awesome. You bought me a coffee, man. Oh, for sure. I'll, I'm happy to answer questions. That's why I'm here. I spent too much time in my career just sitting alone in my garage, painting shirts, talking to myself. Don't get me wrong. But um, now I'm here to, like it's been said a couple times, I'm able to talk and paint at the same time because it's, it's a second nature to me now. And uh, I want to, to share my, my knowledge. I want to see other people doing this. There's a stigma behind airbrushing that it's all old school. And there's a stigma behind graffiti that it's all vandalism. And I want to break both of those because this is kind of cool. It's a lot of fun. While I was redoing the studio the last week or so, um, I wasn't able to paint, but I was still working on YouTube videos and stuff sometimes, and I, I kept on coming across videos of people airbrushing, and it reminded me, like, man, I really miss painting. It's only been a couple days. I want to go airbrush. Um, it's just really fun. You think you think watching it's satisfying and fun, which it is. Uh, imagine being able to, you know, create what you want to create. And like I've said many times, your, your airbrushing skill, your physical skill with this tool is different than your artistic skill. And I have skill with this airbrush, but my artistic skill is kind of limited to, to the particular things that I like to do. 20 bucks? Nuh uh. 20 euros, too. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Watch out, Minecraft kid. Here I come. But yeah, you guys, like, there's many people out there with way better artistic styles than I have. And I would love to see what you can create when you have the ability to use this instrument. Um, it's awesome. Let me add hashtag public tennis on the brim of this hat. Some random person, get your pizza, man. I'm gonna. That's awesome. That is what's up. You guys, I'm smiling. You can't see me. Hashtag public tennis. I'm gonna do a script style. How small should I make it? I'll make it pretty small. Better than private tennis. That looks like a U. Okay. Hashtag public tennis. There it is. That's awesome. I really think you add too much paint. You reach a point where it looks really good, but then you keep adding paint and it starts to look junky. That's that's fair. That's I'm not offended by that. Um, the purple was a lot. I could have left the edges cleaner. You're right. I appreciate that. Do you have to plug in airbrushes to something? Uh, you do need a, a source of air, yes. Right now, I got quick disconnects, which are really great, instead of a hose for each one. But this follows a big old hose that way, and then it goes around my house outside to a compressor. That's just a big old air compressor that is very loud, but it's outside, so I don't care. And uh, yeah, you need a source of air to propel. And it actually, it doesn't blow the paint out of the airbrush like most people think. It pulls it out. Um, I don't see if I can see this on the camera lens. I don't know. 
Um, probably can't actually focus on that. The air flows around the outside of a cone and it siphons paint and it, pu it actually pulls the paint out and siphons it through the top. It doesn't blow the paint like you would think. Um, but you need that air pressure around 30, 30, 40, 50 PSI to get a good consistent spray. You deserve a million subscribers. I don't know if I deserve a million subscribers, but I would like to have a million subscribers. Let me read this, this is a lot. For the Miss Karen a hat, I want it to be all black, tan, or cream, comma, red, comma, pink. That's not a sentence. Okay. So you just want to change the color. Okay. Black, tan, cream, red, pink. That's, a, that's quite an array of colors. Cream. Let's start with a muted out pink color. Is there a way to work from a CO2 canister? Yes. Um, not the, maybe if you have some kind of adapter, maybe the little ones, but I've got a big 20 pound CO2 tank. It's about this tall off the ground. Um, and yeah, I've got a regulator that converts that into a standard quarter inch air fitting. And then I bring that into a hose. I don't have an exact time of how long that 20 pound tank lasts, but, um, several hours of painting I can do usually two events two several hour events off one tank and they cost like 80 bucks to fill but they're silent no one yells at you you don't need a, an outlet nearby so so yes you can work from co2 there's also much smaller quieter air compressors if, if noise is a problem or something like that yeah, let me go with that. Hold on. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. Um, there is one of my tanks right there. There's two of them down there, but they're they're real dusty. And then, remember, there's, this guy plugs into the tank and converts it into a, a standard quick release air fitting. That was expensive. That was more expensive than the tanks were. But uh, yeah, it works. That's how I do my events. Wait, my plug came out. There. This is Karen. Miss Karen. Miss Karen. Um. You always gotta be careful when your name is Karen and you want to make changes to your design. You know what everyone's thinking already. To the comment about uh, adding too much paint and going too far with designs, um, I agree with you a lot of times. I take it a step too far. If you look at the canvas, I don't know how I can describe it. The canvas I did a giveaway on, the graffiti alphabet. The thumbnail is me standing there holding it. It's like blue and purple. I really wish I just stopped at black and white. It looked great while it was black and white. And then I went ahead and added a bunch of color to it and it looks way worse than it did. Uh, that's the artist problem. They wanna add more detail. I wanna add more detail. I wanna keep going and I don't know when to stop. And sometimes hindsight's 2020 and you would have just left it where it was and been good. Aren't I tired? Yeah, I'm tired and I'm hungry and I have to pee, but it'll be fun. I got other things going on right now. I've got three more hats to paint after this one and then I'll probably take a break. Um, I could paint more hats. I've got a lot more. I just don't have them standing here. I don't have time to be tired. I'm behind on orders. I'm taking every moment I can to paint as fast as I can. And I will sleep later. My boy's inside taking a nap. When he wakes up, I have to 
hang out with him. I gotta go hit you up on Instagram. Awesome. Sweet. Cool. I'll keep an eye out for that message. That will be a fun thing to do. This is interesting. Red, pink, cream, tan. I don't know if I've ever done a color scheme like this one. I've also got to bust out some airbrushes I haven't used in a long time. Hopefully they work good enough. what it is. Okay. That goes over here. And red. That's not the right one. That's why I'll take red. Time is it? It's 2.45, I still got some time. I'm gonna be up tonight painting a big group order patch that I am behind on. If that's your order of hats and you're watching, um, I have not forgotten about you. I'm doing my best. What size needle? I don't actually know what the default needle size is on the Omnis. Um, people have popped in chat before and I think they've said 0.3. Uh, that sounds right. I know when I use Vegas, I use the number threes. and it feels the same. So three sounds right. sell custom designs on black shirts I don't on my website um, because my website's limited to what I want people to order real quickly without having a conversation but I do offer custom stuff just send me a message through that website or on Instagram or whatever and we can talk about it I'd be happy to make you something yeah um, again that website is limited to just simple easy stuff that I want strangers to come order I can I get the paint you use at Hobby Lobby? Yes, this is Createx paint. Um, it works great and fine. Um, it's more expensive at Hobby Lobby because it's Hobby Lobby and everything's more expensive at Hobby Lobby and they only sell the little bottles, which is, is plenty, it's a lot if you're doing hats or small scale stuff. But if you're going through gallons of paint like I do, then you wanna order online, bigger quantities. Um, Autism mom changed to I heart autism, black and green. Okay. Looking forward to your next live show. Maybe she's watching you. Autism mom. No, I heart autism. If you're watching, then thank you for ordering. some random person send me a message on Instagram or through the website and we will I'll hook you up. A U T 
ISM. Just curious if it's enamel paint or acrylic. Um, it is enamel. Oh, sorry, it's acrylic. Sorry, it is water-based acrylic paint. Um, the only difference in between airbrush acrylic paint and regular acrylic paint is airbrush paint is uh, just a little thinner. It's a little finer. You're not using a paintbrush with it. Or you're spraying it through a tiny little nozzle, so it's got to be really refined and thin. But it is, at the end of the day, just water-based acrylic paint. I've actually used regular acrylic paints before, as long as you thin them down enough, um, it works. Use a good quality um, acrylic paint because you, again, this has got to spray through a tiny little fine tip nozzle. And if it's too thick or if it's got chunks in it, it's going to give you a bad day. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're in a pinch though, because um, there is a big difference as far as how it handles. I mean airbrush paint versus standard acrylic paint. But I was in a position where I couldn't get paint in time, I needed paint that day. So I ordered, I just went to the store and got some regular craft paint and watered it down and it worked out. I actually used baby oil to water it down, which I don't know if that was a good decision or not. It was early on. I just for some reason thought that it would work better. And uh, it smelled good. I don't know if it, and it worked fine, but. I'm just concentrating, no talking. Fine, I'll keep my mouth shut. Hopefully you guys can learn by watching uh, just as I, as I do my thing. But again, I'm gonna make specific like how-to videos and some tips, beginner tips and stuff. All that's coming soon. This, this in the studio is here. It's time to build, build all that. Um, and I have links in the description to where you can buy an airbrush kit. Um, hopefully I will have a new link soon. Um, I think I will be partnering with a an airbrush supplier soon to, to to work out a deal where they're gonna they're gonna provide me with paint and some some things that I need and I'll be sending all you guys to them as soon as that gets finalized I'll start doing it. It's Spray Gunner. Spray Gunner is a good uh, airbrush provider. The issue right now is they don't they don't have a whole lot of of siphon feed airbrushes like this. They got a, a, some new ones coming in um, that I will look at and they're sending me to see if they work out. I'm sure they'll be great. And if that's the case, then we're going to, we're gonna do it. But, but for now, if you wanna start airbrushing right now, go to that description. There's a link to my Amazon shop. It's not my Amazon shop. It's just a, a list of products that I've 
put together for you to, to buy on Amazon because Amazon is convenient. It is an affiliate link. I make like a little bit of money or something, but an insignificant amount. Alright. Let's add some white highlights. It won't wash off. No. Um, we heat press. Airbrush artists use a heat press to cure the paint after we've painted it. Uh, it's 350 degrees. Everyone does it a little different. I do 350 degrees for about 15, 20 seconds. And uh, the paint doesn't wash off. It slowly fades over time, just like anything else will, just like a screen print will. The screen prints crack, they don't fade, but um, all shirts eventually start to kind of wear out. But airbrush shirts, if you take care of them properly, will last for years for many washes and still be completely fine and wearable. Um, if you get like a portrait done or something on an airbrush shirt, um, those are really expensive and stuff and I would recommend not washing the shirt unless you need to. But if you're doing graffiti text or something like this, I'm laying down a lot of paint when I paint and that really helps the longevity of the shirt. So that's cool. But no, they're washable. hat. Here's a change from truckers. Misfit. Blue, black, pink. Drippy letters. Wild style. Maybe a shadow background, a city background. Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit above and beyond on it. Okay, black, blue, and pink. Um, let me, give me a second, I'm gonna set up this other camera. If I can reach it. Oh. I just want to make a time lapse of this one also. I post it to my TikToks and my Instagrams. color. Tomorrow I'm going to test. Go study for your test. Just kidding. So if I did went home, the paint would wash out immediately if I don't press it. You can use an iron also. There's a lot of instructions and videos on how to press a shirt at home or how to use an iron rather. Alright. Counted letters wrong. Just have to scoot. My S. F. I T. I want to do something cool with the T. I really don't like painting on these flat brim hats. mixed with water and paper towels to practice. Yeah, true. Um, any kind of ink or dye. Ink is really cheap. Just get some ink. Mix it with a lot of water. Food coloring works too. 
um, and just practice with that. Paper towels are good to paint on. Newsprint is really cheap to paint on, but it's harder to paint on newsprint because it's not absorbent. So keep that in mind. Um, paper towels is what we always practice on, but nowadays, um, you know, with Corona. <laughs> just kidding. Just I practice now when I do when I do practice or when I sketch something out. I I practice on newsprint paper. Get a big old hundred sheet giant eighteen by twenty four canvas for very cheap. I also get pre cut Pellon squares. They're um they're for screen print they're screen print test squares. And I paint my designs on those. So if I ever do mock ups for customers or want to do a design just for the website or something, I'll paint it on a, a screen print test square. They come in black and white. This is going to be a cool one. Testers enamel paint? I haven't used testers paint. Alright, let's get to these black outlines. Outlines? I forgot my other camera was running and I got nervous because the camera was running. Is that that's dumb, right? Because I'm currently live streaming. And I get nervous because the camera is recording me. Okay. So this is gonna be harder to read. And that's because this dude in the description was like, I'm a tagger, I know what's up, feel free to do your thing. And he's giving me a little bit of a license to, to not worry so much about legibility here, but instead do something creative. So, brace yourself. Where are you from, Dale? I am from, what's up, J.E.? I am from Richmond, Virginia. That's where I am currently. I've been living in Virginia since I was a, a children. So I you say I'm from here. Roswell, New Mexico. What's up? Hat. 
Cooperate with me. Can't believe some like a random stranger bought me a pizza today. overspray and avoid paint collecting in these folds. You can do that by always spraying perpendicular to your surface. If I sprayed like this, it would collect on all of these wrinkles. Still talking about that pizza. I am hungry, man. Or woman. Human. I got in trouble for that. I just, I just said, "Hey, man." And she's like, "I'm a woman." I'm, like, I'm sorry. I was just that's a generic greeting. I don't know you by your username. I'm sorry. <laughs> We need some some extra stuff. This is where I usually mess it all up and I should just leave it alone, but I'm gonna start adding some shadows. Yeah, I need to just leave it alone. All right, it's fine. Pink and blue, right? Pink, black, blue, pink, yes. Let's fill it with pink first, and then I can add some blue on the other side. Cell phone outlet, what is going on, my dude? Okay, you don't need to be sorry for that. Ah. Still some money to, to work on. Some people are offended by it. I don't want to be offensive. Alright.
I'm gonna do this outline and then I'm gonna figure out a way to really carry a background on the sides a little bit. Um, I don't want it to be too crazy. I'm gonna throw some splatter in here. Just spraying paint at an angle off of the clothespin, and as the paint builds up, the air pressure just splatters it off. And you can control the size and the consistency of the drops by the angle and the amount of pull and the distance, and there's lots of variables, so you kinda gotta feel it. generic type of shapes on the side here. Make sure it's kind of symmetrical. Fade a little bit of this heel up from the bottom. And some solid white. I'm actually not going to do it. highlights on the letters, I'm only going to do an outline this time. A key line, if you will. Not key lime, not a pie. I wish it was a pie. I'm gonna make a turkey quesadilla. Cause I have leftover turkey in the fridge like everybody else does. And I'm going to put it in a quesadilla with some cheese. You might want to stop me, but you can't. is great thank you sir again thank you sir slash ma'am thank you friend I never know what to say I really don't want to go for a 3d effect too much I just want to add a little bit of highlight to these areas. Too much, as always. Don't know when to stop. <laughs> Excuse me. Misfit. Misfit. How many, can you guys read that? How many of you guys actually in, know what that says? I know it's a difficult one to look at.
throw it over there. Last one, and then I'm gonna hop off here and make a turkey quesadilla. More pink and blue. Pink, blue, purple. All right, nine, five, four. Got some numbers. Typically, I don't like to paint numbers because numbers don't have as much of a flow as letters do. But uh, I guess it's not up to me, huh? There we go. They're gonna be more bubbly, bubbly numbers. Symmetry. I don't like numbers. I don't like them. Nine, five, four. All right, everything's kind of on this side, so I'm gonna put a drop shadow on this side. Kind of center everything, and bring it back to the middle. Whoop. Hi, 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 hi. All right. There's no spam in the chat. What's up? I see you, friend. All right. I need to do a thing on top, which I don't want to do, but it's part of the design. Let's fill this in and then go ahead and eat some food. Thank you guys for hanging out. Again, if you want to start airbrushing, in the description there is a link to an Amazon shop where you can buy some airbrush equipment. Um, or you can wait and I might have a partnership that I can send you. Whatever. Um, my Instagram is, there's a link in the description to it. Um, I just changed the actual username itself to at Dale underscore the underscore airbrush underscore guy. But uh, probably easier to just follow that link in the description. Dale the airbrush guy. You can just Google it or I mean search it on Instagram. Dale the airbrush guy. You'll see me. Same thumbnail. You should recognize it. What else do I need to say? What else is there? I appreciate the super chats. That was awesome. If you guys are still in here. That was really cool. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Having someone to feel like I'm talking to and share with while I'm doing some work. Hope you guys learned something. If you want to learn more, then Live streams are great to ask questions and stuff, but also we've been making, again, those dedicated how to airbrush videos. So go ahead and do this, subscribe, follow along and things. So, you know, when those come out, those should be soon enough. Um, if you have Snapchat, I have a Snapchat, I have Instagram, I have TikTok and everything else. Feel free to follow in whatever channels you 
use. I post on all of them. There's different moods for each one. So you'll see different stuff on each one usually. Boop, boop, boop. And if you want to buy a shirt or a hat, um, airbrushcustoms.net. Again, there's a link in the description where you can buy all these. If you order now, you can still have it for Christmas. That's not going to be the case for a whole lot longer. So, um, that's that. And, uh, what's up? Let me add, add some more questions real quick. Send that message in, buddy. Yes, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for the pizza, honestly. Um, motivate you. I'm glad to see that it's motivating people to work. Like I've said many times today and over the, the, the streams, I would love to see more people come in to airbrushing again. I get so many comments about, I used to airbrush, I used to do this, I'd like to get back into it. You should. It's a lot of fun. Um, but that's it, guys. Let me review what we did today for anybody that's joined in. Team Frank, soulful. I got the autism and Miss Karen. Misfit was a fun one. Somebody told me I put too much color in this one. They were right, it's fine. Jessica, Trudy was a cool one. I like the way that one turned out. Jay Butterfly, I had to squeeze a Y in there, but it was good enough. And we started out with these shirts. Kyra, Kyra and Mia. And this is the new studio. I'm still recording this hat. But that's what's up, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna eat that pizza. <laughs> um, I might actually have that for dinner because I'm gonna make a kiss to you right now. But thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, new studio is awesome. Looking forward to doing some more stuff in here with you guys. How does this look on the camera? I need to see how this looks. Where's a good one? This one's kind of cool. These fluorescent hats glow in this black light, which is really neat. Um, um, but yeah, so see you guys and I'll talk to you later and stuff and bye. Yes, I want to end the stream.